Hey, it's Jackie, and welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I'm showing you guys my take on the foxy eye trend. So I wanted to do this for a little bit, and I filmed this look about a week ago, inspired by Kendall Jenner, and I ended up not using it. So I thought I would switch up my inspiration and use this photo of Bella Hadid, which is super over the top. Her makeup is very glam, and I thought, okay, I can work with that because I'm just gonna go extreme with the contour like her picture and go with this very um, elongated cat eye shape. Also, a little disclaimer, this hairstyle, so this is my hair and then there's a wig and I just kind of put it on and blended my hair over it I hope it's not seen as cultural appropriation It's just some lace braids going backwards I was recreating the photo and then later I was like ooh, this might not have been the best style I don't know Maybe it's a little bit iffy, but hopefully not and hopefully you guys just enjoy this very over-the-top makeup You'll see as some steps. I'm like, oh, is this gonna turn out? But I think it did and I would love to see you guys trying this extreme supermodel makeup look and let's get into it. I already have self tanner on my body so for foundation I'm using the Power Fabric Long Wear High Cover Foundation from Giorgio Armani. This is definitely a luxury pick. It's really beautiful. I picked it mainly for the shade because it'll help warm up my skin and tan me a bit but I think I am going to get this again in my everyday shade because it's full coverage, has anti-aging benefits, and it has a daily sunscreen. So everything that I'm looking for and it leaves a natural velvet matte finish so even though it is high coverage and I normally go for a light to medium coverage and then build that up, this gives me a similar feel without having to build it. Now a drugstore pick that I really like for concealer is the CoverGirl True Blend Undercover Concealer. I'm using a lighter neutral shade on the high points of my face and beside the nodes, be nose, <laughs> because uh, we are going to contour and slim it down. A product I always use is the Charlotte Tilbury Beauty Light Wand and I almost never use the contour one because I prefer powder contour, but since I have a bit of a tan, we are going to layer products for an intense supermodel-esque cheekbone. I'm starting by applying this around my forehead, giving myself more of a square jawline and chin, and then of course intense cheekbones. And something that I do for my face shape if I want it to appear longer is I'll contour the sh um, sides of my cheekbones as well. Generally I accentuate my round cheeks, it's a feature I, I like about myself, but for a longer slimmer face this makeup step is a great one to try if you want that look. And we are blending this out and it's definitely more cool toned which is great for contour. Another place to put a bit of contour if you have very plump cheeks, which again, nothing wrong with that. But for this look, I'm going to add a bit over my cheeks to mature my face. And then since it's so cool toned, I wanted to blend some more warmth. So I'm using my favorite bronzer, the Hula Caramel by Benefit. And all of these skin steps will look muddy and unnatural until we have that bold eye and highlighter on there. So don't be alarmed at this stage. One of my favorite Charlotte Tilbury blushes is the Charlotte Tilbury Cheek to Cheek Swish and Glow blush in Pillow Talk, but since I'm more tanned, it looked lighter than I wanted it to, so I ended up switching over the blush later on to Mood Exposure by Hourglass. Just left this in here because it's a beautiful blush anyway. And let's move to the nose contour. I tried to make these steps as easy as possible um, for that snatched Bella inspired nose, so we're gonna do two small lines up the tip of the nose, and then I'm bringing the bottom of the nose slightly down. I'm just creating a tiny little line and not too far down because it'll look super weird, but a tiny bit does make the nose look a bit longer. And then above the two lines we've created on the tip, create a tiny horizontal line and then back up again on both sides. This is creating that snatched longer tip. Above that, let's fade across for a slight upturned effect. And then where the eyebrows are, create a connection to the nose bridge in a rounded shape. And now for that tiny nose bridge. For creating the illusion of a smaller structured nose, the way I like to do it is instead of a straight line like all the way down, it looks a little bit more realistic to have small lines that connect to each other like they're like a set of bones. So two small lines slightly angled towards each other and then an even tinier set of parallel lines beneath that and then I'm fading out with my finger. You can make this super intense. I added a bit more depth so from afar it would create a better illusion but this is just inspired and I did want to see how small I could make my nose look. 
on camera and a little side note I do have to make the contour much more dramatic than if I was wearing this makeup in person so that it translates through the lighting and the camera but subtle looks way better in person you can get away with intense makeup for photographs or Instagram um, so you can always switch up this look to work for you and what really brings the whole contour look together is an intense highlight I freaking love love the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Beauty Light Wand in Spotlight. It really picks up the light nicely, it doesn't cling to pores and you don't need a lot of it and it just lasts a really long time. So add the lines right beside the contour and then blend out slightly for that snatched effect. My lips are bottom heavy and Bella's are opposite so I'm using the Sexy Mother Pucker Lip Gloss. This is from Soap and Glory and it has quite an intense feeling to it. Um, I'm just adding this to my top lip to see if I can plump it up a bit. And then brows, I am not gonna shave my brows. I'm gonna show you guys the technique that I did um, to get that straight brow look without changing your shape. First, brush up your brows and see if when they're brushed up, if you can make them look straight with the tips of those hairs. When analyzing mine brushed up, I saw that I could make mine look straight when I wasn't taking off the end, but bringing the head of the brow up a bit higher. So I'm filling that in, adding a couple strokes, but keeping it natural because this look is more about the eyeshadow anyway. And I'm using the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter to set the shape. One of my brow tails down further, so I've taken off a couple hairs with some tweezers and th that way my brow's a little bit shorter. And then let's move on to the shadows. I wanted to use the Too Faced Born This Way Natural Nudes palette because it's new and I haven't featured it yet, but I ended up going back to my OG favorite, the Natural Love palette, in like every video I use this, but take any neutral, medium brown or gray and pat this over your lid. For round eyes, going a bit deeper on the lid will help the eyes look a little less protruding, and then I'm planning the shape of the eyeshadows inspired by this photo of Bella. Going into the crease and then out in a winged out shape just past the end of the brow, fading upwards. I thought the shadows that I was picking out would appear more cool tone than they actually did on me, so I did switch palettes. So once we have that shape, then I'm going to apply the silvery taupe. With a cool matte gray, I'm dragging the inner corner closer to the nose, leaving some space between the contour and brow for a snatched nose appearance again, and elongating the inner corner and outer corner will help round eyes look more feline. Add a black shadow along the lash line starting on the outer corner and fade it upwards. And then pat the silvery taupe all over the lid. Again, you can keep this matte for smaller looking eyes, but I love the bit of sparkle that Bella had so I kept it in there. Under the lash line, we're going to fade out on the outer corner and with round eyes we're going to skip that center portion of the eye because it can often accentuate the roundness. And the cat eyeliner is subtle but effective so let's take that black liner pencil and create a sharper inner corner. And then through the center of the eye we're going to close it off with liner just on the waterline in the middle and then accentuate the outer corner as well. I think the liner in the middle of the eye it's like taking a circle and drawing a line through the bottom, creating more of a half moon shape. I hope you guys are liking my explanations. I don't know if that was necessary, but how sexy is this eye shape? It looks like not a crazy amount of makeup, but it's soft and snatched, and I'm definitely going to use this eyeliner style more. Other eye, we're doing the same thing. I added that matte gray brown through the fake nose bridge we've created and into the crease, still leaving some space between the brow, fading the shadow out and upwards. Deepening up the look with a silvery taupe and some black on the outer corner in a slight wing. The liner in the inner corner again, center of the eye, and following the same wing. Added some light shadow for a highlight. And back with my favorite highlighter in the inner corner, and I feel like this step is so beautiful precisely under the more angular inner corner. Just kind of brings it all together. 
Please ignore my self tanner wrists and a tip I saw in Jamie Page's foxy eye tutorial that I wanted to try is placing the end of those lashes slightly above your natural curve of your lash line. I never thought to do this and it does make a difference. I love the look of it just kind of following that shadow shape. I started to conceal my bottom lip, which I don't love how the lips turned out, not gonna lie, but you can totally just go with your natural lip shape. But anyways, I bounced back to the eyes for some Better Than Sex with Diamonds mascara. And my favorite lip liner is Iconic Nude by Charlotte Tilbury, hands down. It's the perfect shade for this specific look and I just use it a ton. And I'm really gonna start to overdraw my top lips similar to Bella. Oof, I was like, what have I done? But even looking at the picture for my inspo, I could have gone bigger, but I was like, okay, we're stopping here. And then you can bring the Cupid's bow a little closer and rounder together to make it a little more accurate. And I underlined my bottom lip a bit, but it did make the part I concealed pop and it looked a bit weird. So I thought, okay, I'll keep it for my recreation photo. But if I was going to wear this look, I would just overline my top lip a bit and then line my bottom lip normally. Um, but I like to go with my inspo. It's always a fun challenge. Finally, for a lipstick in the center, I went with Revlon Super Lustrous New Shine Shade in Glossed Up Rose. It's super pretty and comfortable and I just patted this through the center. If you've ever really overlined your top lip, you can see the light reflecting between the skin and your lip line. So I like to add usually a bit of a darker shadow that's matte and pat through that um, little space there. But in this look, I really didn't blend enough and I didn't go in enough on the bottom lip so it looks a little mustachey. But I'm noticing this after the fact. So I tried my best at the time. I'm trying to blend out with some lip liner here. And then again, I'm adding some of that hourglass blush in mood exposure for a bit of color to the cheeks. And I love Bella's looks with her darker hair. They're kind of like 90s a lot of the time. The hairstyles she's worn are kind of rocker chic and I just love it. So let's do some model posing. When I was looking through the viewfinder, I did not feel like myself at all, so I was like, whatever, I was playing music so loud and posing way more dramatically than usual. It was pretty fun, so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Obviously, you can tell by how I'm talking about parts of it, it's not perfect, but I do love these snatch techniques in here, and I really hope you guys will try some of them out for fun. I hope you guys enjoyed my modern supermodel makeup look and if you did make sure you give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more pop culture videos. I have a couple really fun character looks coming up but in the meantime while I'm prepping for those I've been doing some kind of random videos like my soft e-girl makeup look which I really like and I've been loving your rose recreations. I think you guys did such an amazing job. It's not the easiest tutorial to follow and I'm so glad you guys have been trying it out so if you haven't seen that video please try it out because I'd love to see your looks and also um, what was I gonna say oh thanks to everyone who's been pushing me to get TikTok because some of you guys who've been following me for a while were like why aren't you on TikTok like you should promote your stuff on there and I started doing it and it's a lot of fun I'm not dancing over there but um, I'm posting like all of my videos in little short forms and it's awesome because you can use the songs from like the shows and movies so yeah if you want to check out my tiktok it will be linked down below and anyways i will see you guys in my next video Whoa. Did it stop? Nope. my window's broken <laughs>